Hello everyone, my name is Adam Twilight, this is Hexamania, and welcome to Danganronpa 2. Uh, Byaki got fucking killed. Um, also, uh, we're about to start investigating, but, uh, Monokuma was like, Yeah, hi bitch. You think you're gonna investigate, huh? Ta-da! You thought it was time for the investigation, but... The Monokuma file! Oh, he's giving us the Monokuma file. Well, okay, that makes sense. Hey! This is like thought. You amateurs need this, right? What the hell is a Monokuma file? I don't like this. Jeez, explaining the rules all the time really breaks my bones. Why? It'll sound like I have phones in the first place. Like, don't even make me say such lame jokes. Allow me to explain. Let's see. The Monokuma file contains precise and detailed information regarding the dead body. What? I brought it to you so you guys can pr smoothly proceed with the investigation. I'm such a nice guy. I'm so nice I want to be known as the Mother Teresa of the mascot world. Nicey say, you're just a selfish meanie. What's this? My mama, I'm me the meaningless mascot. You're still here. You stupid brother. Don't put me in the meaningless mascot genre. Damn it. Come on, let's go. Your turn is already up. Hurry up and get the hell out of here with me. <laughs> oh, she don't pull my ears. They're gonna come off. They're finally gone. Monokuma file, huh? Anyway, I guess I should look it over just in case. The victim's body was discovered in the dining hall of the old molly near the hotel near the hotel Mirai. The estimated time of death is 11.30 p.m. The victim was repeatedly stabbed over 10 times between the throat and abdominal region, resulting in death. Aside from that, the body has no other external injuries and no chemicals such as poison were detected. So, Byakuya is really dead. Damn it, you promised you- There wouldn't even be one victim, why do you end up being one? That's the- that's a good fucking point, Hajime. Especially considering, like, Yakia literally survived the last game. What the fuck is he doing dead now? And now I'll never know what you were gonna say to me. I cannot talk to others about my past. I suspect that my skeptical nature is partly to blame. Dist distrusting others and being distrusted in turn. For a long time, my life has been a living hell. It was inevitable that it would end up this way. In the end, what did it even mean? Could it be? Even so, if there really is traitor, isn't that gosh darn awful? Pretend to be your ally and tricking you guys. It can't be helped if someone like that gets killed, right? A traitor? No way, just because he said a lot of serious things does and doesn't mean he was the traitor. What am I thinking? Okay, it's been added. Now we need to carefully examine everything that's right. If we're gonna do it, we need to get we need to do it. If we're gonna survive this, we need to do it. I have to prepare myself for the worst. Now we can fucking investigate. Holy shit. Okay. Top the table, only thing on top. Dusk lamp. Antique lamp looks rather heavy. Power cord connected the outlet, so it would have been useless during the blackout. Nothing else on the table. Now it's not the time for me to flinch. Gotta do it! I let her shout as if to encourage myself and quickly look beneath the table. Immediately, I, I noticed an unexplainable smell, like rusted iron hanging in the air. And during the stinging pain in the back of my eyes, I slowly shifted my gaze towards Byakuya's body. Byakuya Togami, the ultimate affluent prodigy, uh, progeny, was the kind of guy who said a lot of purple things. But he tried his best to lead everyone. Why? Why do you have to end up like this? The only thing I can do right now, for Byakuya's sake, is to uncover the truth behind his death. Duct tape. Pay and polite to the non sticky side. And the dim light beneath the table seems to glow dully. Could this be glowing paint? Alright. Blood flowing from Gekko's body formed a huge pool underneath the table. That's a lot of blood, that there was blood splattered everywhere. Even the inner side of the tablecloth is covered in blood. Blood must have splattered all over the place and got stabbed. But there don't seem to be any drag marks leading from the pool of blood. Body is clapped face down, as if he was in the middle of attempting something. Looks like he was, according to Steely, stabbed in between the throat and abdominal region. Steely stabbed. Would one of us really do something so horrible? 
There was also a knife here, which could have been the weapon, but it... That looks like cutting. That looks like if somebody sliced into someone, not stabbed. Because if they were stabbed, like, wouldn't the blood go from, like, the tip to the top, as opposed from, like, from side to side? How did the killer bring this knife to the dining hall in the first place? Dracula thoroughly patted everyone down and thoroughly inspected every corner of this building. And all the confiscating dangerous items were supposed to be placed in the door in the case. Stole this knife from the case or they hid it somewhere hard to find. More to think about the knife. Some kind of paint applied to the hilt. Glow dolly in the dark. Glowing paint. Oh. I guess we were just fucking leveled up from that. Okay. Night vision goggles. Hmm, what is this? It looks like binoculars, but why there a pair of binoculars on the table? Hey, H Hajime, those aren't binoculars. Huh? Then what are they? Perhaps those are probably night vision goggles. You know, like from fucking uh, G Force. Like, do you remember that hamster movie, Hajime, where the hamsters became spies and they wore night vision goggles so they could do their missions and shit. I know it's an obscure reference, but you gotta work with me here. Night vision goggles. I seen them at the supermarket on this island. They also stock self-defense kits too. That's the case. The killer used the night vision goggles to kill Biakia during the blackout. We must investigate on the table. By the fact it's just me, I'm thinking I'm working pretty hard. Image shifts a little, reading closer to the proof behind Biakia's death. All right. Good mom, you got anything to say? Oh, hellhound hearing, answer my call. Impossible. <laughs> is this effort futile as well? Hey, are you still looking for the earring you dropped? No. It's not a mere earring, it is the hellhound earring. Fine. Long ago, in a faraway land, a beast known as the hellhound was feared by all, even by he who summoned it. Well, this is certainly random. The hellhound tore its way through innumerable battlefields, its fangs glistening with blood. And its drenched blood red fur would dry in the howling winds of loneliness. What if I only tamed that diabolical beast so you've received an earring to commemorate that event? The hellhound earring. So that I may never forget the night of battle that fearsome Pomeranian, uh, Pomeranian. I wear the earring at all times. Was that really a freaking Pomeranian? I think it's really important to you, but for now we need to investigate. I won't let you! Where is it? Where did it disappear to? Maybe fall underneath the floor? The carpet didn't cover the whole floor. It might have fallen through the caps in the uh, exposed floorboards. <laughs> Aha! So that's what transpired. Such a clever little bobble. Gundam laughed uproariously as we walked through the wall and pressed his head against the gap in the floor. He appeared beneath the floorboards. I can see it! Ah, oh, there it is! I found it! Surely that is the hellhound doing. <laughs> but ha ha! It seems God exists for my benefit. I see. Good for you. Let me ask. However, how do I recover it? I cannot fit through my my arm through this opening. Were you to use a tool, it would probably not reach either. Then maybe you should just give up. What? Give up what? The world? I might give up the earring. No! Fool! Have you not re yet realized? The world will come to an end if the human race were to lose that earring. You humans are so satisfied with clothing yourselves in layers of false knowledge. If you bridge, you will die. But even with all those layers, you still will not survive the winter. Why am I being scolded? Fine. It was foolish of me to what rely on you fools. Fine, I shall do something about it on my own. Now if you'll excuse me, I must go save the world. You must the earring back my enemy is necessary. His determination is truly inspiring. That'd be nice if he actually helped me with the investigation. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll check the dishes. I'll have fancy lotion party to dishes, and I eat that much. You take not much not much out of the ordinary. There's the iron plates. Air conditioner, why not? Conditioner, air conditioner, could it be? Hey, all of you, why can't you act a little more grown up? Hmm, what does that sound just now? 
The air conditioner is probably the only machine in this room, and the air conditioner is remote control. The timer is set to 11.30. Pretty sure Biakia's time of death was around that time. If so, that means... The mechanical sound before the blackout probably came from the air conditioner. My flashes of inspiration aren't as bad as I thought. Alright. You got anything to say? Wahiru, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. What's going on? That what you expected me to say? Because I feel terrible. One minute Biaki is alive and well, and in an instant something awful suddenly happens. Of course I'm not fine. Why? Not only that, but whoever killed him is one of us, right? That hasn't been determined yet. It's already been determined. You've already accepted it, haven't you? This is that we have to find out who the killer is, find out which friend killed our friend. I don't like it either, but we won't survive if we don't go through with it. <laughs> it's not just for yourself, we have to do it to protect all of us. If I if only I had acted calmer during the blackout, Bianca might still be alive. This is the worst. This whole thing would have never happened. Stop blaming yourself, nothing good will come of it. Ugh jeez. You didn't cheer up by your boys like me at all. Hey, Hajibi, forget about what I just said. Got it? Yeah, that's fine. I got it. Hmm. Anyway, I won't tell on up for now. I can't become a burden to everyone. Plus, there might be a clue that only I have access to. A clue? Hey. Photos, the ones I took just before the blackout, remember? Hey, Byakuya, come on. Everyone, come on. I'm gonna take a picture. Alright, say cheese! Oh yeah, the pictures. Hmm. Wanna see them? I have a digital camera so I can show them right uh, to you right now. Really? Please! Um, Let's see. It's this photo. Hmm. And this one. I took these two photos right before the black coat, but... Huh? Is is something wrong? Hmm. I didn't realize it just now, but right before the black coat, Byakuya was standing in a totally different place from where he found him. Was it his body under that table with the lamp on top of it? The one underneath the monitor? Prior to that, Yaku was standing along the wall for this away from the table. You're right, that's pretty far. There's something... Everyone's standing position before the black on might be a huge clue. Hey, can you approximate everyone's standing position for the photos? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It'll be hard to understand from the photos alone, so it might be better for me to plot it out. Hmm. But, will that actually provide a clue? I don't know yet, but I feel like it could. Leave it to me. Got it, then leave it to me. That's pretty much the only job I can do anyway. Thank you. Alright, now that that's decided, you better, do your best. you better work hard on the investigation too. How much longer are you planning to stand around? Do you understand? Do you understand what's going on? You gotta find out how Byakia died. Yeah, I know, but it's because she's all fired up now, but when she's a totally different person now than when she was feeling down. Also, I'm just gonna straight up say it, black guys are fucking awful. They are the worst. The fact that somebody died during a blackout in this game already just proves further than me, the Blackouts are the worst thing. Cause like, around like a year ago, Hex experienced like, the absolute worst fucking Blackout ever. Like, uh, the entire, like, <sighs> Hex goes to college, so the entire school went fucking completely dark. Dorm was dark. No fan. Nothing. Uh, Hex and I, we had to like survive off of like listening to Nintendo Switch sounds because <laughs> the Switch was still like fine. Um, plus, on top of that, like the communications were down for several hours still, and nothing was fixed until literally the next day after I think like noonish. And the blackout started like, I think, oh god, it was like 9 p.m. ish. Uh, there was like a really, really bad storm that caused it, and trees were knocked over, and holy shit, it was fucking awful. Basically, blackouts are fucking cursed. Just don't trust blackouts. Anyways, Nagito! Hey. Hey, Hajime, there's something I want to run by you. Before the blackout occurred, Byakuya was in the dining hall with the rest of us, right? Yeah, that's right. And if Byakuya's dead body was discovered after the blackout, then... Don't you think he died during the blackout? Well, now that you mention it. But, but why was Byakuya's body under a table? Even if the killer tried to hide him, it's not like he would have stayed hidden forever. Isn't it confusing? You're absolutely right. It seems finding out what exactly happened during the blackout is key to solving the mystery. 
There's no way I'd know. It was so dark during the blackout, I couldn't see a thing. That's not it. Although, if seeing was impossible, then there's a possibility someone might have heard something. Heard something? Are, are you talking about her? Recon, did you hear something? Uh, I, I must, I must have escaped my classmate's body. Yes, I knew one who has medical knowledge. That's why I, I need to do it, to, to do it somehow. Before you start, why don't you calm down for a bit? You're right. I, I need to calm down first. I, I'm careless enough as it is. That's pretty obvious from how you fell earlier. I, I, I'm terribly sorry about that. We're showing you something that's going to be so unsightly. Yeah, you, you made me remember it again. Uh, I made such a fool of myself in front of everyone. Forget making a fool of yourself. How in the world did you end up like that? Well, I got started by the blackout, slipped to the carpet, and I was struggling to get back up. Hey, that was so embarrassing. Please erase it from your memory. Even if you ask me, I won't be able to forget it so easily. Sorry. Oh, I can't stand it. Embarrassing. <laughs> That's so fucking truthful. Holy shit. Okay, yeah, I think I checked everything of actual importance in here. Yeah. Okay. What other things do I have to- Oh shit, I forgot about the uh, Duralumin case. Also, let me just check on uh, Sinigami real quick. Sinigami, you doing good? You're doing good, okay. Anyways, the case is open. Ah, uh, this is the metal case Yaku had with him. I believe you said it was made of Duralumin. Last time I saw it was closed, but there are a lot of odd things inside this case. Like a nightstick and pepper spray. Hmm, what's this? The hard plastic case, but it's just the case and the inside is empty. What if it was inside? But the one thing that catches my attention is the small key. It must be the key to the other Duralumin case. The other case was in the office and all the collected dangerous items were inside of it. If the key to that Duralumin case is right here, then it's unlikely the murder weapon was used to used to kill Gokyet was taken from that case. Which means the weapons inside the Duralumin case aren't related to Byakuya's murder. Even so, I still don't get it. Why did Byakuya have this Duralumin case in the first place? He is packed with all the security equipment? Maybe he was just being ca extra cautious just in case? No, that can't be right. That's way too overboard. Could he have known something was going to happen beforehand? And because of that, he went through all this trouble just to be extra careful. Now then, we're all shooting against the gate. Hajime. Ah, uh, Hajime. A moment. Hmm, what is it? Hey. When we're finished with the investigation here, would you like to hear what everyone has to say together? If I go by myself, some people might not talk to me out of caution. Well, we've been told that one of us is a killer. Can't be helped if everyone's on edge right now. But why me? <laughs> hmm? Oh, it's because you're easy to talk to, and I feel like I have a scent similar to mine. Yes, your scent is very similar. I like your scent, Hajime. <laughs> we both harbor special feelings for the Peak Academy, isn't that right? Well, yeah, but... Fine, if we're gonna do it together, let's get on with it. There's no time for our old chit chat. Thanks. I'm glad. It'll be a great help. Special feelings, huh? Even so, what he said about us being similar, I don't think I agree. Now then. I guess, for now, we should search the inside of this old building and listen to what the others have to say. Not just the dining hall, I think we should consider this whole building to see as a crime. After all, the blackout took place at the, at the time what have happened throughout this entire building. Yeah, you're right. Alright. Let's go. Sonia, you got anything to say? Um... Um... There is something I would like to ask you. Hmm, what is it? Um... It is strange. It no? appears that all, only that wall is a different color and material. Why is that? Perhaps. Oh, it's probably a fire door. Fire door? Hmm, you've never seen one before? It's a door that shuts to keep fire from spreading by containing it. If it happens, you can run away, right? Wow! Ah, I see, it is like a barrier. It's like lining up plastic bottles around the house. That's only done to keep cats from getting in. 
You know about getting cat icky with cats from getting inside, but you don't know about fire doors? I am ashamed! Truly I am culture ignorant. I am ashamed of myself. Okay, fire door. So then I guess we check the kitchen next. Because it's here. We may as well check it first. Alright, let's just go from left to right. Now you know you get anything today? Since we've come all this way, let's investigate this area just for the heck of it. There's a chance there might be some kind of clue in here. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Hajime. Th oh, not Hajime. Thanks, Doggy Hill. Holy fuck. Thanks, nice Japanese. Mm, big. Isn't it amazing? That meat is so big. Even I was shocked. Oh, it's a dish fit for a tropical island. I'd never be able to get meat like this in Aoyama or Azabu. I'd never be able to get meat like this in my hometown, much less Aoyama and Azabu. I get it, you don't have to repeat yourself, but it's so big, where do you get it? <laughs> I asked Nakamaru. Apparently he killed the cow at the ranch with his bare hands and brought it over. His bare hands? <laughs> That's a little hard to believe, but it doesn't seem like it's completely impossible either. I mean, after all, Nakamaru is very big, very strong, and also very attractive. But you're my favorite, Hachime, don't worry. Those hands of his, they look like he specialized in punching things. I wouldn't want to get punched by those hands! <laughs> Seriously, Nakamaru is so wild. He's totally right at home in a country center. I'm so jealous. My hometown is near Ayama, uh, Ayama and Asbu, so wild country things like that. They seem in mind a lot, you know? Man. Well, I guess this meat has gone to waste since this awfulness happened right when the party started. The only ones who ate any food were Akane and Pekko, who took some portions for herself. Eh? Don't say that. But I worked so hard to cook the world's most refined party dishes, only two people actually tasted them. Well, it's not like I actually believe it, but if there is, it really is a killer out there. Ugh, I'll never, I'll probably never be able to forget that killer. He's scared when he's mad. Party dishes. Okay. Equipment list. Obscured. Equipment list. Well, just from reading through this list, looks like the knife next to Bianca's body didn't come from the kitchen. It appears I've been brought up from outside. From outside? Then how did the killer get past Byaku's body check? That's weird. Strange, isn't it? I mean, he didn't even go easy on the girls when he was performing pat-downs. If that's the case, they probably brought the knife in advance and hid it somewhere. Hey. So, it's surprising how much equipment this kitchen has. There are iron plates for barbecuing, and even a portable stove for cooking hot pots. But this is all stuff that doesn't pertain to the murder, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I agree. Kitchen equipment. Okay. Terra Terra, you got anything to say? Hey, you were in the kitchen during the blackout terror. Uh, were you in the kitchen during the blackout terror, terror? Uh. <laughs> That blackout totally startled me. At first I thought I was just in the kitchen, but when I finally managed to get out of the kitchen, the hallway's black a pitch black too. And then I heard everyone's voices, so I fumbled along the wall and tried to feel my way to the dining hall. But that place was pitch black too, and was like pitch black everywhere. Can you use the kitchen stove as a light? No, 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 no. Ah, uh, that's impossible. The gas stove needs electricity to work, so it's directly affected by the blackout. I see, then it's got. Uh, then I guess it's not possible. Since you work with fire in the kitchen, I figured you'd be able to use it as a light source or something, but I guess it's not that easy. I guess I'm pretty much finished investigating the kitchen for now. I'm gonna know, let's get going. You're right. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, and I think I'm gonna end the episode here for now, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!